Megan Harbold, VP Strategy and Growth with Sky, and we are here in Las Vegas for Grocery Shop 2024. Hello everybody, I'm here with Jacqueline. Jacqueline, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Nix. I'm the EVP of Brand Sales for Epsilon Retail Media and happy to have Sky as one of our partners. So I'm Mike Halverson. I'm a Principal Product Manager for Halverson's Media Collective. With me, I have Cody Tusker from Acosta Group, Senior Vice President of Retail Media. Thank you so much, Cody, for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Toby Espinosa, I lead the ads business at DoorDash. I've been there for around nine and a half years. Uh, have done everything from launching new markets to selling the largest enterprise restaurant chains to now building our internal retail media network. So Amazing. Pleasure to be here. It is so great to have you. Hi, I'm Rebecca Matthews, Director of Customer Success for Data Impact by Nielsen NQ. Um, and really excited to be here today. My name is Stephen Kelly. I'm leading market development uh, for Advertima in the North American, South American region. Uh, Sean Brown uh, with Bird Dog Media, their CEO and founder. Uh, we focus on helping small and medium brands grow within the retail media world and get into retail. I'm James Allison and leading market development for Advertima for the EMEA region. Um, yeah, and Advertima is an in-store ad tech solution, bringing audience measurement and activation to the physical space. What is something maybe super interesting that you've learned so far at the event? Yeah, I, I mean, I think one of the, the largest one of the largest areas, that, there's two large areas that I think are very interesting. One is the rise of the, subs the subscriber business. So, you know, Walmart on stage yesterday talking about their, their base of um, a Walmart Plus users, I think is super interesting. At DoorDash, you know, we have 34 million monthly active users in the United States that order anything from us, restaurants to Dick's Sporting Goods to, uh, yeah. you know, a, 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 a soda from 7-Eleven. And all of those orders kind of combined are super interesting. If you look at that base of user, and then you go a little bit further, we also have over 15 million Dash Pass users. These are our subscribers that are ordering heavily. And what's interesting is that both the subscriber base and the total base of users continues to grow for us and other large platforms. Uh, it just kind of says that there's a lot of interest for uh, selection, faster, better, cheaper in the local economy, and that doesn't seem to be slowing down. So it's very cool. You know, for me, I sat in on a, um, I don't know if this isn't really ad tech related, but I sat in on a White Castle conversation oh, okay. and I didn't know they were family owned. I didn't know that, uh, you know, where they'd started, they'd been around so long. And I think yeah. the most interesting thing is they are the first fast food company to actually freeze and sell their products at retail. So it was, it was, that was an interesting sort of a brand that everybody knows yeah. um, to do that. And then further, I learned that you can actually go there and have a, a four course meal in a yes. sort of a dining setting. And I, I didn't know that. It sounds like something interesting to get off the show. Yeah, I went to one of the keynotes this morning and you know, unsurprisingly data was a focus, but I think the increased personalization of the data, of making sure that you're not just reading, reaching specific audiences, but it's more about that person and more specifically the, the consumer, you know, and reaching them with the right message at the right time and really giving them useful content for them to action on it. So a lot of the meetings I've been having um, are with the brands that yeah. are here. And one consistent theme across all of them is that they are investing in more significant measurement capabilities. So one of the things I've heard many times is a brand will say, okay, with our retail media, we have retailer A saying 10 to one ROAS, retailer B saying 20 to one, where our accountant says, there's no way you got better than three to one, because that's just how the numbers work out. And so it's really difficult for them to choose where to spend their money when it's just all disjointed like that and when the retailers are creating their own homework. The meetings we're having with clients. What we've had with our meetups, what we hear from them, we've done some hosted dinners and some events. And the magic has been not so much their individual problems, because each one is a unique yeah. journey, but the fact of bringing them together and the way they're connecting to share their problems and it helps each other solve. Yeah. So like, like last night at dinner, we had like eight clients and everybody has their own different problem and we just kind of stepped out of the way and they just started helping each other and because everybody wants everybody to succeed and they're in different categories so i find interesting is that everybody's here to actually learn and to help and some of the magic of where that's happening is at the actual level of people who are got the hands on the keys so i would say just really the um omni division that we're seeing with the brand so instead of having a separate e-commerce group they're still having people that are specializing in it, 
but they're really making sure that Omni is throughout the organization. So people in all departments are focused on e-commerce, which is really exciting. Okay, so my favorite quote that I heard was that um, perfection sometimes gets in the way of innovation. Things don't always have to be, like if you try to make things absolutely bulletproof, you're not gonna push the needle and like you know, grow the industry. So I really like that. That was a good answer. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Stevens, Stevens hit the nail on the head. I think um, for me, although grocery shop is not just about retail media, it's pretty awesome how there's been a, a really nice thread throughout the show, whether it's the keynote speakers or actually the specific retail media sessions. I think it's, it's really cool how it's been delved into. Um, not just kind of, is it growing? Is it, is it booming? Actually getting underneath the, the hood of it and figuring out what it's all about. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. So if you were to think about, you know, maybe 12 months ago, something that you wish you would have known about retail media, is there anything there that you, you wish you would have known then yeah. that you don't? You know, I think, I, you know, from the position that I'm in and, and having been, been at this for a while, you know, for me, you know, I always look at things on a, on a really actually a 12 month rolling basis. And I think, you know, you can, you can take your eye off the ball on fundamentals, right? And I think we get a little excited about some of the KPIs that are out there. And, the importance of just the brilliant basics, I think, as new retail media networks evolve, right? And I think that's just, that's the key thing that I want to just always ground myself in and, and keeping in mind, right? Is we've got to nail the fundamentals yes. before we can then go do the fun stuff. And I think as we see this surge of not only just new retail media networks popping up, but the, the technology that goes into this, the thoughtfulness that goes behind it, yeah. um, the investments that like Walmart Connect is making and you know, adding more value by buying Vizio and adding a new place to go find consumers. It's all phenomenal, but you got to ground yourself in, in, in just the, the basics. And yes. that, that's something that I always try to ground myself in. Yeah, starting with the foundation, having yep. a strong foundation. So I would say one of the biggest things is there, you know, there's so many products, so many retailers, so much competition as well. Private labels growing, we all know these things. Um, but I think just like the importance of partnerships, the ecosystem is so challenging and not one solution can do everything, unfortunately. So it's really important and critical for brands to work with people that will partner with others. So for instance, we have partnerships in um, many ways, but it could be something from like a PIM that we can then ingest the data to help automate and then with you know media strategy to try to help drive um, just to help brands really drive um, basically insights to action how can we do more faster better um, for the end consumer the cookies weren't going away <laughs> well, I think some people saw so, that writing on the wall well, but like everybody was pivoting actually when we started the agency, we were basing the idea on cookies going away. Yeah. That you have to have data. We have to connect all these sources. Use one key data with AMC and Luminate. Uh, and then our whole proposition was that. Yeah. And then when they pulled the rug out on that, which you, you could predict it was gonna happen, or at least be delayed. Right. But even though that's the case, I still love that, that's, that that was out there to force so many brands to, the alarm bells went off and everybody started to learn Oh, I'm not ready for that. I need to fast track what I'm doing with my own data and 1P. How am I controlling that? Because otherwise, how am I going to reach audiences? How am I going to control my own audience story? And how do I segment my own audiences through that without having that? So now, the cookie's sticking around. Okay, we should be connecting more signals, which will help us have richer conversations and have better ways to do media mix modeling yeah. to understand what are the right touch points to engage. 12 months from now, we're back at Grocery Shop. We're having another cheersing moments what are we talking about we're talking about we're talking about three-way partnerships I think will be critical um, we're talking about the ability for brands to prospect off platform and create a closed loop Ooh, ecosystem with us I love that. Um, in a collaborative way we're working with a partner of ours just like you are a proud partner of ours symbiosis mm -hmm. that allows collaborative bidding between us our marketing team and the brand teams yep. to go prospect off platform with our consumer data and drive back to DoorDash in a consumer first way. I think we'll be talking a lot about that. Um, and then I think we'll be going always back to basics yes. and talking about how do we continue to open up access points to help our customers grow. Absolutely. 
I mean, obviously it's going to be in-store retail media. That's what everybody's talking about now. But I think the difference in 12 months is you'll be hearing about how it actually works and not how we might want to do this in the future. Yeah. Um, I think we're seeing a lot of interest in test and learn right now. And in 12 months, I think you'll, you'll get to see what in-store media can actually do. I mean, I, I'll just add on to that. Um, there's still some reluctance in some markets in adap adapting kind of technologies that can take in-store retail media from digital out of home to in-store retail media in terms of measurement, activation of audiences. So, but I think in the next six to 12 months, we'll, we'll see some big retailers adopting that, that kind of technology and therefore kind of, you know, it will fall in line. So again, in terms of what Stephen was saying, we're actually going to see application of said technologies mm -hmm. rather than just the noise around what could happen. So yeah, I agree with what Stephen said. One prediction I have is that in-store digital screens will be a much bigger part of brands' retail media portfolios. I think a lot of retailers are making investments right now. It's the very beginning stages of what we're seeing. I anticipate vendors popping up that's going to help orchestrate in-store media just alongside all of other channels like social, on-site search, etc. And so that's going to be a much bigger part. And then I think about the impact of brands becoming more sophisticated with their measurement. And so retailers, it's going to hold retail media networks more accountable yeah. in a way that needs to happen for the better of the industry. So brands will have an easier way to essentially stack retailers against each other based on a unified measurement currency. And so, with, I mean, what that means in terms of prediction, performance is just going to have to be more of a key focus and retailers are going to have to make sure they optimize the retail media campaigns based on how the brands are holistically addressing performance across retailers. Now, James, you might be prepared for this because you've done a retail media Thursdays in the past. Okay. Uh, we like to end everyone with some rapid fire questions that you have not been briefed on. These are completely new and a little bit fun. So the first one is, if you could have any celebrity deliver your groceries, who would it be and why? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> who would I choose? Um, good one. Tom Hanks. Oh. Come on over. Yeah, let's have a chat. Absolutely. Tom Hanks is my favorite. All right. Michael Jordan to talk about his competitive nature and winning spirit. Oh. I don't know, maybe John Elway? Okay, good choice. He would probably carry a lot of groceries. Probably carry a lot of groceries. <laughs> oh, that's an excellent question. I would say probably The Rock because he's very strong and I have three boys who are very hungry and they eat a lot of food. Ricky Gervais would have to be uh, the person for me. Okay. Um, very dry sense of humor. I don't think he'd want to deliver my groceries, groceries, but if he did, it'd be fun. It'd be great to have Will Ferrell come in, what he would do to my house. He just would not stop. Or Bill Murray. I'm a big, huge Bill Murray fan. Like, just those unexpected, and just because both those guys are a yes and. Okay, last one. Um, let's see, what is something that, what is the most unique or interesting thing that you double dashed recently? So, you know Magnolia Bakery? Mm -hmm. So Magnolia ba Bakery and DoorDash, in partnership with our Dash Marts, which is our owned and operated equivalent uh, um, uh, e uh, convenience retailers that we have built ourselves, yeah. we did a exclusive Magnolia Bakery banana pudding with peanut butter and chocolate. Ooh. We should have advertised it more. Goodness. It was, but actually we shouldn't have advertised it more because it kept selling out. <laughs> so we double dashed that burritos and Magnolia Bakery. Love it. A really high end chocolate. Uh, Usually, oh, yeah. like, it was like a $20 yes. really expensive <laughs> bar. Uh, I got three daughters and a wife, and they all love it. So it, I'm also scoring points. So I'm, so, <laughs> I'm self serving myself. Uh, but that's probably the, that's the a craziest. Good one. Yeah. It's a good answer. Yeah. I'm a big fan of uh, salads, the pre mixed salads. Yeah. And um, there's some good ones right now out, whether it be like Thai or whatever and so mango Thai it's one yes. of my favorites that is it that was it it was so good too the everything bagel is another it's highly another recommend yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing all right well thank you so much Jackal, for cheers. joining us cheers 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 thank you cheers thank you so, thank much, you so much for all of the Appreciate knowledge it. we'll see you next year see you next year oh my gosh yeah.